Welcome back everyone. Recently there were several comments pointing to a channel that responded to my video on divine sonship in the Bible and the Quran. My video was very simple and straightforward, or a very simple and straightforward topic. I used a comparison of divine sonship in the Quran and Bible to illustrate a problem. Namely, the Quran claims to affirm books that it contradicts. However, apparently my video was not simple enough. Here is the response from FTD Speaks. Speed is increased in this video to save time. Hey guys, I've seen a lot of videos about this topic, and I would have to say, um, from a Christian perspective, this was one of the most weak presentations of Christian theology in an attempt to disprove or discredit Islam. So we all know that Christians and Muslims, they vary in their beliefs when it comes to God having a son, and that son being Jesus, and Jesus being part of the Trinity, and whatnot. So it's, it's clear. Islam does not teach that at all. Christianity teaches that. Uh, when it comes to the sun, both Christianity and Islam teaches that there's no one equal with God, that there is one God, and God is all-powerful, and God is not like his creation, all of that stuff. But there are passages that people take from the, the Old Testament of the Bible and say, well, look, see, God actually has a son, and that son is prophesied to be Jesus in the New Testament and all of that. But this video was presented as, you know, Israel being the son, and of course, I mean, you could say that, like a metaphorical son. If I say to somebody, you know, hey, my son, come here. Or like, hey, boss. Like, I, I talk to that sometimes. Yo, hey, boss, what up? Or uh, what's good, boss? <laughs> or what's good? Yo, my son, chill. Are they actually my son? Or is this just uh, figurative language? Um, and that's just how language is. Sometimes what we're saying isn't literal. It's just mentioning something. So if, if the Quran says Allah doesn't have a son, and then it affirms the Torah, and the Torah says, well, this is my son, it, it, did God really give birth, or did God actually... Uh, produce an offspring called Israel, or is this just a metaphorical thing? If God is outside of uh, creation in the sense that, yes, God can create for sure, but you can call that an offspring. You can call that a daughter even. You know, the, the Bible does use that language, daughter, as well. So it, it's it's figurative. You know, anyone looking at the language can see that it is it is figurative. And now we're not even going to get into the whole debate with uh, Jesus being the divine son of God or whatnot. I'll save that for another video. But this clearly is figurative. You know, even the fact that we use the term he for God is also figurative. God is outside of gender. God created males and females. So this video, I think it just completely fails from a Christian perspective to defend the Christian standpoint. And it attempts to disprove the Quran in a very weird way because anyone reading this religious or not can see that it's figurative when it talks about the sun but literally speaking they say god doesn't have a son because god didn't go and procreate and produce uh, a son that's equal to god according to the quran anyways also the idea that the quran affirms certain scriptures yes islam teaches that the quran does affirm scriptures but also teaches that those scriptures were corrupted over time so a lot of the things in the scriptures the torah and uh, the gospel, those things have been changed and other things have been added into it. So you don't even get the full message anyways. And the Quran is something that can kind of clear up some of the confusions about certain things. And the Quran is very explicit. God doesn't have a son. There's nothing like God. There's no nothing equal to God. There's no wife of God or anything like that. It's God's starting point, And then God creates from there and then gives creations the abilities to have biological sons. But there's no biological son for God. So yeah, wow. I am surprised that somebody produced a video like that and attempt to disprove what Islam teaches. Because they didn't even defend their point properly. And I think other Christians would agree that that was like a very weak attempt to state the Christian standpoint and disprove Islam. It was just, it was weak, honestly, just looking at the, the text that was used. Now let's look at an outline of his response. As you can see, nearly the entirety of his response is in saying that sonship in the Torah is metaphorical or figurative. The actual content of his response is between the 701 and 1002 timestamps, of which about 70% is spent saying that sonship in the Old Testament is figurative. Had he actually paid attention to my video, he would know that this response does not at all defeat my claim. In my video, I said this. It could not be more clear. In no way can it be said that Allah has a son. Since the Quran says in every way over and over that God does not have a son, now I know this may be confusing, but when I say in no way can it be said that Allah has a son, and the Quran says in every way that God does not have a son, what I mean is, get this, in no way can it be said that Allah has a son. But what if, as the response video claims, sonship in the Torah is metaphorical? Would I say that the Quran denies that sense of sonship? It could not be more clear. In no way can it be said 
that Allah has a son. But what if sonship in the Torah is figurative? Would I say that the Quran denies that sense of sonship? It could not be more clear. In no way can it be said that Allah has a son. But what if sonship in the Torah is supernatural? Would I say that the Quran denies that sense of sonship? In no way can it be said that Allah has a son. But what if sonship in the Torah is biological? Would I say that the Quran denies that sense of sonship? In no way can it be said that Allah has a son. But what if sonship in the Torah is talking about extraterrestrial little green alien suns from distant galaxies? Would I say that the Quran denies that sense of sonship? In no way can it be said that Allah has a son. My claim in the video is very clear. I'm arguing that, well, let's hear it again. In no way can it be said that Allah has a son. So can you respond to my video by saying that the sons of God in the Torah are metaphorical? No. Here's how you would defeat my claim. Thesis statement, in no way can it be said that Allah has a son in the Quran. Defeater for my thesis, show that in some way it can be said that Allah has a son in the Quran. This is how you do not defeat my thesis. Claim that divine sonship in the Torah is metaphorical. My statement is exceedingly clear and I'm happy to be proven wrong if I am wrong. However, I'm not happy to be misconstrued in some ridiculous response video. So can the thesis of my video be defeated by claiming that sonship in the Torah is metaphorical? No. I argue the Quran denies all senses of sonship. That's why I said, in no way can it be said that Allah has a son. In no way includes metaphor. In my original video, I said this very same thing two different ways. Now you've heard me say the same thing about a dozen times in this video so far. Maybe it's starting to sink in. But let's go back to zero and pretend that pointing out metaphorical divine sonship in the Torah was a valid response to my video. The response still falls flat, according to the Quran. Surah 518 states, The Jews and the Christians say, We are the sons of God and his beloved. Say, Then why does he punish you for your sins? No, you are human beings, part of what he created. It's difficult to see how this verse would not be a metaphorical usage of sonship, the type described in the response video. However, in this verse, the Quran denies sonship in the metaphorical sense as well. Therefore, claiming that sonship is metaphorical in the Torah again falls flat as a response because metaphorical sonship is denied in the Quran. Let's put this another way for even greater clarity. Think about two realms, the natural human realm and the supernatural realm. Surah 518 applies to the human realm while other relevant verses in the Quran refer to the supernatural realm. Neither in the human realm nor in the supernatural realm can it be said in the Quran that Allah has a son. In contrast, the Torah does, as we've seen, use divine sonship language in the human realm. Israel is God's firstborn son. Additionally, against the implicit claims of the response video, sonship language cannot be grouped into a single category in the Torah, or into a single realm. At this point, I'm steel manning the response video, so I'll move through this quickly. Those who are interested in this topic can pause the video and read the entire quote. I'll just summarize it at a level that even response video trolls can understand. The sons of God in Genesis 6-2 are divine beings. Divine beings in this context is a typical academic word that means supernatural. This is just one source. I could give you a bunch more. The same thing occurs in Deuteronomy 32.8, referring to the supernatural sons of God. Neither in the human realm nor in the supernatural realm can it be said in the Quran that Allah has a son. Now we see that in the Torah, in the natural and supernatural realms, divine sonship is affirmed. Additionally, the response video fails to make a positive case for sonship in the Quran against my negative case. But that's because he agrees with me, and this is where it gets a bit confusing. And the Quran is very explicit. God doesn't have a son. And the Quran is very explicit. God doesn't have a son. God doesn't have a son. But a son in what sense? Metaphorical, divine, 
He doesn't say. So we apparently agree that Allah does not have a son in the Quran, while he just wants to assert meaninglessly in response that sonship in the Torah is metaphorical and treats the topic as if it's univocal. Then the response video goes on to say that Muslims believe the Bible is corrupted. Yes, we all know this. I've done numerous videos on this topic, including an interview with Gordon Nickel, who did his PhD dissertation on the Muslim polemic of biblical corruption. If you're doing a response video to my channel, don't respond in a vacuum and bring up an objection that I have thoroughly dealt with. Now, should I really have to point out that asserting metaphorical divine sonship in the Torah does not evade my claim? Should I have to point out the lack of attention to detail? Should I have to point out the lack of specificity and how that makes his claims appear overtly contradictory? Should I have to point out that his video demonstrates an underwhelming knowledge of both the Bible and Quran? No, I shouldn't. Any thinking person can see this, but if you just want to produce these garbage, rambling, shallow, off-the-top-of-your-head response videos that attract people who just want to hear what affirms their beliefs, mission accomplished. Job well done. Let's end with some tips for FTD Speaks. Pay attention when watching the video you're responding to. When watching the video you're responding to, pay attention. Pay attention to detail and nuance. Make sure that your response isn't already defeated in the video you're responding to. Make sure you don't accidentally affirm the video you're responding to. Make sure you have knowledge of and demonstrate knowledge of the sources cited in the video. Alternatively, you can post a garbage response video that appeals to the masses and get views, likes, and clicks regardless. The option you choose doesn't matter to me. I'm not after the response video crowd anyway. I never have been. For Muslims who are open to having their beliefs challenged, then come on over and actually engage with the content in my videos. Do that, and you'll be doing much more than the response video that we just put through the shredder. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time, metaphorically speaking.